Well, good morning. We are here uh, going to be taking a hike. There's our Jeep. And uh, we're at uh, Saltel Falls. And so I haven't done a walk and talk here yet. This will be a first time. But I want to talk about precious metals to fight the globalists. Okay. Now, I'm going to get a lot of rebuttal on this and everything else because there's a lot of people out there that are very foolish. And, um, you know, there's a time to be very nice and kind and whatever, but then there's a time to just be very blunt and brutally honest. And uh, the people that are against precious metals, the anti-metal people or whatever, they're very foolish. And um, historically, uh, if you study the past, you'll understand that precious metals have always been valuable. All right. And um, when people have precious metals, it keeps the tyrants from completely taking over. But the uh, whole cryptocurrency world, uh, which I am radically opposed to, and I become uh, more hateful towards the whole system as I learn more about it, but that whole cryptocurrency system um, is going to be used by the globalists to control people. And right now, oh, there's, uh, you know, brother, you don't understand. Um, you, you can uh, have some privatization of it and whatever else and things, and Bitcoin isn't controlled by the government. It's just the patent is owned by uh, the NSA. But it's not controlled by the government. You don't understand. Okay. Uh, we'll see how that works out for you. But, um, just want to make a bunch of points here, okay? First and foremost, uh, precious metals are in Scripture. Um, all throughout the Bible, there were trades being made, deals being done and things with precious metals. Of course, the, some of the more famous references, Jesus Christ was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. Um, that's a pretty famous one. Uh, King Solomon, in one year, made 666 talents of gold. Another very significant number there, if you know about uh, future Bible prophecy. And uh, another one, there's a city, uh, Rome, that um, is called Mystery Babylon, and she's decked with gold, and uh, she deals in gold and silver and precious stones. And uh, if you know anything about the judgment seat of Christ, uh, mentioned in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians and, and I think uh, book of Romans as well. Christians for their rewards are rewarded by Jesus Christ when they get to heaven with gold and silver and precious stones. Hmm. So if you deny that, you say, well, there's no, there's no actual value. Well, then you're not just denying the scriptures. You are denying history. Um, there's plenty of examples in history all throughout history of gold and silver uh, being used as a measurement of wealth, right? And of course, if you understand the city of New Jerusalem in heaven, someday the eternal home of the saved, you will know that the uh, streets are paved with gold. It's a golden city and there's precious stones and things as well. So, uh, yeah, there's a plenty of proof that Precious metals are a great store of wealth. And if you go with the whole cryptocurrency thing, by the way, too, um, how do you show your wealth? Uh, real estate or something, I guess, or little sports cars or something that vroom, 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 go around like that. Fancy clothes and Rolex watches and whatever else that nobody would even want in a couple of years. Um, I think I'll stick with precious metals. Thank you very much. Um, Metals hold their value. I'm going to be giving you a good example of that. Um, like I said, uh, you have a sports car. You go out and you buy a Bugatti or something, Verone. Um, and this Bugatti, oh man, it's a $1 million car or something, I think they are. I really don't care much about them, but you know, it's a Bugatti. Wow. Okay. And you drive it and you zip around with it and whatever else. And out places where you can be seen and and things and um, what condition is that Bugatti going to be in in 20 years 30 years 40 years 50 years is anybody going to care about it after it's been 
used and abused for 50 years? I highly doubt it. All right, uh, what about gold? Well, you get a, a gold Canadian maple leaf, they're four nine coins, so they're you know, very high purity of gold, which is, you, you know, think that'd be a good thing. Well, not technically, because um, they scratch a lot easier. And so you get a four nine gold coin and, and you touch it and things and whatever else and it's got finger marks all over it and it gets kind of discolored and, and uh, it gets really scratched up bad. And you take it into a coin dealer someplace and the coin dealer says, well, buddy, I hate to tell you this, but uh, you really kind of ruined the coin. I can only give you spot value for it. And the spot is what the metal itself is worth, and then the premium goes above that. Um, I can only give you spot. Well, okay. He takes that coin, and what's he do? Sells it to somebody, and it goes back to the mint, and it gets melted down and made into a brand new shiny coin. The gold doesn't go away. Um, you know, I've seen examples of you drive around the area up here like this in the country and and you'll see a lot of old vehicles sitting out behind houses i remember um literally there was a place uh like a junk man you know and he's got he had about six or seven old school buses they're useful for storage and uh but old cars everywhere old dump trucks and plow trucks and you know whatever and out in front of that property he had an old older rolls royce sitting there i couldn't believe that i thought wow it was in bad shape you know but you could see it was an old rolls royce what's it worth not anything oh, we'll just melt it down and and uh we'll send it to the mint and they can melt it down and make a new rolls royce i don't think so <laughs> uh you can't melt that down but let me give you an example of what I mean by retaining its value, okay? Let's say, just if you're ignorant, if you're not familiar with the value of gold and things and how things have changed over time, let's just say that you had a great, 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 going back through, grandfather. And in 1860, he's here in America or whatever country you're watching this in, and he says, I'm going to take my entire life fortune and I am going to put it in a box, a sealed box. I'm going to hide it someplace with instructions that this is to be given to my great, 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 great grandchild in the year 2024. Okay. Nobody can have it until then. It has to be sealed until then. Gets all legal stuff and whatever else. Um, sealed until 2024. Okay, and here in America, I'm going to be using this as an example because I'm in America. And so he takes his $10,000 and he puts it into uh, the currency where he's at. Well, it just so happens that he lives down south. And in 1860, they have the Confederate States bills. The dollars of the Confederate States. All right. What would that $10,000 in confederate bills i mean you open up the box it's given to you the lawyer signs it all over and there you go it's yours what would that box of money be worth could you spend it no you couldn't spend it it might be worth a little bit maybe close to face value because of the you know historical quality of those confederate state bills but um it wouldn't be worth anything because the confederate state bills uh, were wartime money and they were basically made to you know help finance the war so the ten thousand dollars that he had back then which would have been a lot of money in his day he sends it forward into the future in the, in the form of cash not really worth that much but what if he had bought ten thousand dollars worth of gold Let's have a little lesson in inflation here, okay? All right, here we go. $10,000 in gold. How much was gold in 1860? Gold was $20.67 an ounce. $20.67, and by the way, it stayed that way 
throughout the Civil War and the whole way up into 1913. And then the price of gold started to go up as the Federal Reserve notes came out in 1913. Hmm. Um, little interesting there. Little side note there. I think that you can tell which way this is going. But uh, so $20.67 an ounce. All right. In 1860. Well, if he had bought $10,000 worth, uh, that would be $10,000 divided by $20.67 would give you approximately 483. It's actually 483.7 something or other, but we'll just say 483. I could round up to 484, but 483 ounces of gold that he would have bought and had in a nice little box. Just under 500 ounces of gold that he could have bought in 1860 with $10,000. What do you think that's worth today? Well, yesterday when I was doing the little notes here, writing this out, gold was actually a little bit lower. It was $2,504.40 when I checked. That was the spot price. And we're just going with spot price here. We won't even go with the what it's actually worth, okay? Um, well, this trail is really falling apart. They logged it years ago, and it's just really has gotten ugly since then. But thank you, logging rapists, again. I mean, it, they do such a nice job of destroying everything with their big machines and all that stuff. Absolutely nuts. But um, what is the gold worth? $10,000 is what your great-great-great-great-grandfather invested in 1860. That gold today would be worth $1,209,625. Uh, dollars and 20 cents. One million two hundred nine thousand six hundred twenty five dollars and 20 cents from an initial investment of ten thousand dollars in the past. That would be a little bit of money. Okay, so uh, does gold hold its value? Um, gold not only holds its value, gold uh, skyrockets in value. Very much so. <sighs> See, the problem is, too, what these guys will do when the logging rapists, they come through an area, they'll come through, they'll cut a bunch of trees out, the good stuff, and then they leave a bunch of junk, and then you get a windstorm or whatever else, and it just knocks all the old junk trees down. A lot of uh, popple here, and, uh, well, quaking aspen, you can call it. Just absolutely crazy. Oh, man, this trail is just completely ruined. Unreal. We'll eventually get down to the waterfall, but uh, can't guarantee a whole lot right now. Oh man, I should have brought a saw. How do I even get through this mess? Look at this. This is going to be interesting, but um, another reason, not only do the metals, precious metals hold their value, but also there's a limited supply of those metals. So you can't have a true hyperinflationary thing. There's not, there's a limited supply. Okay, just imagine if you were given uh, the right to print money. Okay, you can print money and you don't really have to have anything backing it. Well, would there be a temptation to abuse that power? Yes, there would. Of course there would. Sorry about this. I could just pause it and uh, go through, but that takes away from the adventure. <laughs> um, amazing that they didn't kill the big pine tree. I'm gonna show you this giant old pine tree here coming up. Um, that's a big one. Uh, let me show you this very quickly. There it is. Goes way up there. But just to show you how big this thing is, It's a big one. That's a big tree. But see, it's got a bad crook here in the bottom. So there's a lot of crooks in the government too, but, um, but that's a different type of crook. It's not a straight big tree. So that's why it's not much good. Um, but anyhow, 
but uh, there's a limited supply of gold and silver so um, not everybody can have it um, that's why a lot of people would use barter in the past and everything else um, again precious metals have been used for thousands of years I talked about that earlier um, not only do metals have precious metals have a uh, you know a true value to them but they also have a industrial use um, there's a lot of uh, things that are very useful that you can use precious metals for um, obviously you wouldn't be watching me right now if it wasn't for precious metals a lot of computer po components um, are made out of gold and silver so um, and of course there's uh, a whole thing about uh, an EV battery in the future that's going to charge quicker and and everything and go for a lot longer than the current lithium ones but it's going to have to be made almost completely out of silver um, I think 70% of it will be made out of silver or something like this so uh, is silver going to go up in value oh my yes absolutely and uh, get back to that here in a, in a little bit because I know what people are going to say about it. You know, in the end times, it's not worth anything. People are thrown out in the streets. I already did a sermon on it. It's not for Christians. Well, we'll get back to that here in a minute. Okay. Um, here's another one I want you to think about. Okay. When it comes to precious metals, the more we have, the less they have. That's important. Okay. Um, the more good people... Uh, not just the saved, but also just people that are um, decent people and whatever else. Uh, when I say good people, you know, I understand what I'm saying there. Uh, the Bible says that there's none good, none righteous. I get it. But what I'm saying here is the more that decent, hardworking people, uh, not the globalist people that want to destroy everybody's life, uh, the more that regular people have, you know, pull precious metals off the market, than the less they have to control us with. All right, and on that note, if CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, are forced on us in 2025, which they're talking about, um, what else can we use? Oh, well, there have been ancient cultures that have used sticks and stones or something like this. Uh, okay, maybe as a temporary type of a thing, but um, if you show up at my place and you say, hey, you know what? I need some firewood, okay? Could you please make some fire, you know, trade or sell me some firewood? And I say, what's your method of payment? Well, I have, you know, 16 round pebbles. No, no deal. Um, what I would need is I would either need something, you know, some kind of food product or something or cloth or some kind of a thing like that if we're trying to just say we're not dealing with central bank digital currencies. But if you come and you say, hey, I have some precious metals, I have some gold, I have some silver or whatever else. Can I buy a quart of firewood for, you know, this much in silver? Sure, absolutely. Sounds good. Okay. Um, in other words, there will come a point in time where I think that people are going to have to say, you know what? Uh, we need to have precious metals because we have to reject this central bank digital currency thing. And again, what's the biggest problem with a central bank digital currency? As soon as that comes in, then they can control you completely. They'll know exactly what you spend your money on, and they can shut you off if you say the wrong thing. It is the death of freedom. Okay, that's why we must fight digital currencies. We cannot be for digital currencies. All right, they're very bad. Extremely bad. Um... Another thing, bankers can't steal your metals if you hold them physically yourself. And even if they're in the bank, if they, which would be really dumb, but if you had the, you know, bank, or you have the uh, precious metals in a safety deposit box or whatever, um, the bankers can't take those and spend it on Wall Street. Ah, and back here. Um, so that's another issue. As soon as you deposit your paycheck in the bank, the bank takes that money and the bank says, okay, we're going to go and we're going to um, put this into the stock market. We're going to give it to whoever wants it. Somebody comes in and they want to borrow money to, you know, start a marijuana shop or, or strip club or something like that. Well, the bank will lend them your money. 
Uh, I wonder how the Lord feels about that. He gives you the money and then you put it in the bank and the bank uses it for evil purposes. Not so good. I'll show you here, we're just about at the waterfall. It's right over here. Get out here without falling in. Here we are. The waterfall is right over this way. I don't want to fall in. It goes around that corner there, over this way. I'm gonna walk down that way now, I'll show you the waterfall. But again, you know, if you don't understand that, the banks, they take your money and they spend it on whatever they want. They give it to whoever they want. But I said about this earlier, there are two prophecies in regards to precious metals in the end times, and both are negative, okay? Um, in the book of James, you have the thing of precious metals that uh, the rest of them will be a testimony against you. They, they won't be good for anything in the end times, okay? In the time of Jacob's trouble, I should say it that way. And Ezekiel chapter seven, verse 19, talks about the thing of the Jews will cast their silver into the streets, and their gold won't be able to deliver them in that time. Well, I'm going to tell you what that, how that prophecy works out. That prophecy works out as um, what I believe is going to happen. Right now you have the Jews and the Romans working together, the mingled Jews, the papal Juden, I like to call them the Pope's Jews, and they're working together in the finance world. And you can check it out. I'm not lying. I'm not being racist or judgmental or anything else. That's what the truth is. Okay? And they are working together, and they don't have a whole lot of their wealth allocated in precious metals. Okay? I'll show you the waterfall here quick. Down here it is. And it goes down over this way. I'll try to get down there too. But, um,. What's going to happen is they are going to realize, and I think it's happening right now as I speak, they're starting to realize the extreme importance of precious metals, and they're going to start to buy them up. There's the waterfall. Now let me get away from here so you can hear what I'm saying. And so, what's going to happen is, right now, most of their money is done with debt, okay? That's where most of their wealth comes from. Their wealth comes from uh, lending out and usury, and which the Bible forbids them to do in other countries. They can do it in their own country, but they can't do it in other countries. So all the papal Juden that are involved in usury here in America, they're in sin for doing that. They should not be doing that. Um, and so they're going to use that debt to, they'll take the price of precious metals up, and they did this back in the Great Depression, so you have to understand this. They'll take the value of precious metals up, but then what they'll do is, they'll, it's not up as high as it will go, but it'll go up enough and the economy will be bad enough that people will be lured into you know, getting these precious metals, or they'll sell their precious metals, rather, and they'll say, wow, I'd made a lot of money, you know. Uh, Gold went to 3,000 an ounce and silver to 50 an ounce or something. Well, it's going to go a whole lot higher, I believe, unless they can bring in some kind of a, the CBDC or something like that, that they can continue to suppress the price. Because again, if you understand, the biggest, 13 biggest banks in America, they uh, are shorting the precious metals market. And um, that's the number one thing that they're going after, that they're trying to keep the price suppressed. Um, and they're going to put more pressure on people to sell off their precious metals. And when the people do, then at some point in time in the future, then eventually those metals will be worthless because there's, you know, the whole system is going to break down according to the book of Revelation. And I believe that to be true. So again, please don't write in the comments, oh, well, you don't understand, you know, the, the, uh, 
precious metals thing is it's a scam it's going to be worth nothing in the future uh, no it's actually going to be worth a lot in the future and I think that it would be well it would you would do well as a Christian to say hey you know what um, I don't want my money in the bank right now um, I'm going to put you know me personally I don't keep a whole lot of money in the bank I don't want money in the bank uh, I don't really like them spending my money uh, just giving it to other people uh, I'm not for that and so if you have any kind of money in savings or whatever else consider it okay do whatever you want um, you know doesn't matter to me I'm not obviously some kind of professional that's giving you a professional advice or something like that whatever but uh, I think it's a wise thing a historic thing to put your money into um, precious metals so uh, just looking over there um, where my wife and my son are at but um, so enough said uh, you can do what you want with it but there's a lot of very wicked people out there and they are wicked that are very much against precious metals and they're completely without any kind of scriptural basis they're without any kind of historical basis any scientific basis for it um, and uh, don't listen to them don't waste your time with them uh, a lot of the other the cryptocurrency stuff and whatever it's a get rich quick scheme um, again you have the whole FTX thing with that uh, uh, guy papal Uden guy the um, what was his name Sam Bankman freed and uh, the guy with the poofy hair <laughs> and um, and how's that working out you know oh I had uh, two million dollars in the FTX currency where is it now the system crashed and uh, knowing if you look at the prophecies of scripture the electric power grid comes down in the time of Jacob's trouble so uh, bye bye cryptocurrencies uh, there's no cryptocurrency without uh, electric power grid and I mean coming down as in it's not going to be coming back up again so there's no way to get around that um, <laughs> so let me know your thoughts in the comments section below and uh, I'm going to head back to the Jeep now because we're down here at the falls. Hopefully you enjoyed the little hike and we'll see you in the next video.